spoiler ahead. Here's the walkthrough of the new Nightwave Glassmaker Jumping Puzzle Stage 1, where you need to find the 5 items in the surrounding after you enter into this tile set and look for the clue. It is really not hard and quite straightforward. And the thing I noticed is that once you initiated it, the clues will remain the same until you resolve it. Even after you fail it, when you attempt to solve the jumping puzzle. Of course, as always, there's a lot of neck from Nora herself, which you can ignore if you don't care about the lore. Well, Here's the first one. See if you can suss out any clues about the stuff. This one of the main clue here. You just need to remember the shape of the weapon. Whereby you'll be presented with a few of different types. This is an easy one. Not the tools of someone who works the tower scaffold. Was he expecting trouble? To be a interact and start the jumping puzzle, you need to spend pen. Here's the second clue. What you need to take note is the words highlighted in bold. And sometimes the shape of the icon that they show. You can of course rotate around the items but the actual clue is actually in the text. Looking for custom tech, but it sounds like our guy didn't have the means. The Ayatan stars. What you need to remember is the logo. This is in particular an easy one because of the sword shape. It's very really hard to miss. Folklore has it these Ayatans used to hold memories. Nowadays, some monsters survive peeling old war trinkets like this, harvested from the tower. As you move around, you will see some areas are barricaded, which I believe it will be open once the next stage is unveiled. Now on the floor, there's two more artifacts for you to inspect and take note of. Again, the keywords have been highlighted in bold with a brighter text color, so it's again very hard to miss. Another tabular. On this one, in my particular case, is Barrel himself that you need to remember. Of course, in your case, you may have a different guy. So just take note of that. And you are now good to go. I've inspected the rest of the area. There's nothing here. So at this point, you can walk around, navigate what's in the surroundings. But actually, you are also ready if you want to take the jumping puzzle challenge. To start the challenge, interact with the statue guy and it will cost you 10 satellite resonance every time when you initiate the challenge and if you fail during the challenge, this 10 will be consumed and you will need to farm for more but personally I don't think you really need to specifically go and farm for all this you can Obtain it passively through the missions because they will randomly spawn and drop once you kill the enemies turn into dust.
You will then spawn on the arena. After the nagging, they will present you with the choices that you need to make based on the clue you've gotten just now. Make sure you jump onto the platform during this 60 seconds. If you got the wrong one, the platform will fall and you will forfeit your 10 satellite resonance inventory. One after another, you basically need to jump on towards five platforms. And in the end, they will present you with this stone. As you analyze it, the challenge is done. And now you'll be granted 7,000 Nightwave credits. That's an Oracle word. Means a lot. And more nagging from Nora. That word these days. He sounds friendly enough, but listen to that anger. At this point, if you have more satellite resonance, you can of course relaunch the mission, but it won't give you anything extra. So the recommendation is to save the Cephalon for the next puzzle as it launches. If you go in, you will see that the clues remain the same, the evidence or artifacts remain the same. So once you've initiated the round, it's pretty much locked down till the end of the five puzzle stages. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Stay safe and goodbye.